Okay, in this video we're going to learn how to combine random variables together. So hopefully you watched the first video over what random variables are, because now we're going to talk about combining them together. A couple rules that we're going to learn in this video, and then every time we learn a rule, we'll actually put it to use. So, first rule, if you're simply converting a random variable to a different unit, say centimeters to inches, or an amount to a dollar value, you are allowed to multiply both the mean and the standard deviation. So if you're not talking about multiple random variables, you're just talking about one random variable, and all you're doing is converting it, multiply, multiply all you want. So, here's an example. Consider the probability model for X, how many toys Jake sells in one day. So this is a model that shows how many um, toys Jake sells in one day. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the probabilities are underneath each option. So the first question is actually a little bit of review from the previous video. Find the expected mean and the standard deviation. So I just want to make sure we understand notation here, right? We say, what do we expect the X value to be and with what standard deviation? So notice those two... Um, uh, notations there are really important. Now you're going to get this information from your calculator. So let me show you one more time how easy this is on your calculator. So in list one, plug in the options 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In list two, prog plug in the probabilities. Um, make sure they correspond to the proper number next to it. Then all you got to do is hit stat, slide over to calc, one variable stats, list one, comma list two, because you do have to take both lists into account. And there you go. You get the expected number of t-shirts at the very top, 2.68. I like to round the two decimals. And then the standard deviation is 1.31. So let's come back here. So we expect to sell on any given day, we expect to sell 2.68 t-shirts. And the standard deviation is 1.31 t-shirts. Now make sure you understand exactly what an, ex what an expected value is. All we're trying to say is that if we were to look at many, 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 many days, okay, um, you know, most days we're going to sell two t-shirts or three t-shirts. Some days we might sell one again. If I look at many, many days worth and I add up all those days, how many total t-shirts I sell and divide by all those days, that is the expected mean, right? So this is an average of what I expect to sell in the long run. But of course, that number could deviate, which is why there's a standard deviation to it. Now, here's where I'm going to do some converting because it says that each toy costs $12. So what is the mean and standard deviation for how much money he makes in a day? Well, this is actually really, really easy. So I'm going to say the expected, I'm going to use C here for cost, right? The expected cost. Well, all I got to do is take the 2.68 t-shirts, and all I'm doing is converting the t-shirts to dollars, seven times by 12. Because remember, every one of those t-shirts costs $12. So 2.68 times 12 would lead me at $32.16. So this means in the long run, again, after looking at many, 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 many days, I expect to make $32.16 per day because I expect to sell 2.68 t-shirts per day multiplied by 12 is how much money. And I could do the same exact thing for the standard deviation for the cost. All I'm going to do is take that one 0.31 t-shirts that I expect to deviate each day by and times that by $12 and 1.31 times 12 is $15.72. Pretty easy problem. Now, with these probability models, don't forget, I could also ask you a ton of probability questions, too. For example, I'm going to grab a different color here. I could say, what's the probability that he sells more than three t-shirts? Okay, more than three means more than three, so it'd be four or five. So all i got to do is add up 17% plus 11%, and the probability he sells more than three t-shirts is 28%. That's very easy. Or I could say, what's the probability he sells at least one? Remember, at least one means greater than or equal to 1. So at least 1 means 1 or more. So I could add up 16%, 30%, 23%, 17%, or 11%, but we also learned that the easier way to answer that question is to just get rid of none. If I get rid of none, I'm left with um, you know, at least 1. So if I take 1 minus 0.03, I get 97% chance that I sell at least one t-shirt. So don't forget, I could also ask you probability questions as well. But hopefully you understand the idea of just multiplying because I'm just converting to dollars. All right, now, the next two rules deal with combining multiple random variables together. So if you're considering multiple random variables occurring one after another, you may add the mean or the expected value together for each occurrence. So that's easy. You've got day one, day two, day three. All you got to do is add together. However, you cannot simply add standard deviations. You must add the variance first. 
then take the square root of the total variance to get a total standard deviation. Now this is a little bit confusing. I tried to allude to this in the last video. The idea is that when you take standard deviation and square it, you get something called variance. Okay, which means vice versa would be that the square root of variance equals standard deviation, right? Take the square root of each side and you get the square root of variance equals standard deviation. So the idea is when we're combining multiple standard deviations together, we cannot add standard deviations. What we have to do is add the variance. So you square the standard deviation to get the variance, then you add that variance together, and then you take the square root of that total variance to get standard deviation. Now, now, that sounds a little bit confusing, but it's going to make a lot more sense when we look at our next example here. So let's go back to our number of toys. So once again, consider the probability model for X, how many toys Jake sells in one day. Now, we've already understood that he expects to sell, and again, we used our calculator for this just to remind you, 2.68 toys with a standard deviation of 1.31. But remember that this is in any given one day. So how many total toys would he expect to sell in five days? Okay, how many total toys would he expect to sell in five days? So no longer are we talking about one day. Man, this all represents one day, right? Just one day. Now we're talking about five days. So to find the, uh, the expected total, I'm going to use a T there for total, for five days. It's actually really, really easy. Well, the first day he expects to tell 2.68. The second day he expects to sell 2.68. The third day he expects to sell 2.68. The fourth day 2.68. And the fifth day. So you are allowed to add expected values for multiple days here. Now, obviously, this is the same thing. Oh, I wrote 5 HB is 6, 8. This is the same thing if you took 2.68 times 5 days. Again, that would be obviously be the faster way of doing this. So 2.68 times 5 means over the course of 5 days, he expects to sell 13.4 total t-shirts. Again, day 1, day 2, day 3, day four, day five, every day we expect the same thing, so we could just multiply by five to make that a little bit easier. Now for the standard deviation. I cannot do it the same way. I cannot just add 1.315 times. It's extremely different. Because remember, what I have to do is add the variance. So the first day, 1.31 squared, that's my variance for the first day, plus 1.31 squared is my variance for the second day, plus 1.31 squared is my variance for the third day, plus 1.31 squared is my variance for the fourth day, plus 1.31 squared is my variance for the fifth day. So you cannot add standard deviation, you, but you can add variance. That's why I had to square each day's variance first to get the total variance. Then I can put a giant square root around all of that to get my total variance and then a square root to get back to standard deviation. Now another way to do this that would be a little bit shorter is to think, okay, 1.31 squared is my variance for one day and then I have five days of that variance and then a square root around all of that will get me my answer. So the square root of 1.31 squared times 5, so that's 5 days of variance, and then a square root gets you back to standard deviation. So my standard deviation for my total would be 2.93, 2.93. And I did that, all that on my calculator. If you want me to show you real quick, I typed that in. I typed in the square root of 1.31 squared times 5. Um, times 5. Please make sure you note that the 5 does not get squared because it's 5 days of that variance. And that's how I got the 2.93. Okay? So once again, key here is you cannot add standard deviation, but you are allowed to add variance. So you have to square the standard deviation to find your variance. And then again, it's the idea of 5 straight days of it. So hopefully that makes sense. So over the course of 5 days, Jake expects to sell 13.4 total toys, and 2.93 is how that number of toys might deviate. So hopefully that was pretty simple, but it, it does uh, explain the idea of multiple random variables, right? The first day, the second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, you get the idea. Okay, now these rules um, all hold true for combining continuous random variables as well. Remember, a continuous random variable is a random variable where the options are limitless. I couldn't possibly list them all. The list would be way too long. So here we go. Carl and Doug bowl every Tuesday night. Doug bowls a mean of 212 and a standard deviation of 31. Now, I like to kind of organize myself here. So I expect Doug, D for Doug there, to get a 212 when he bowls. And the standard deviation for Doug is 31. 
And then I have Carl as well. So the expected value for Carl, use a C there for Carl, is 230 with a standard deviation for Carl to be 40. So um, Carl does typically bowl a higher score than Doug, but his um, results vary more. Doug's slightly more consistent with the standard deviation of 31 versus Doug's 40. Now, the idea here is that this is continuous because, again, you know, Doug could get a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6. And, you know, when you bowl, there's way too many options all the way from 0 to 300. Now, that's not necessarily infinite or limitless, but it's way too many to ever make a list, which is why we would consider this a continuous random variable. Okay, so the idea here is what is the mean of standard deviation for their total? So let's just say that they're a team and we're going to combine their scores. Well, here we go, right? The mean for T, their total. Well, it's so simple to do the mean, right? You just take uh, Doug's 212 that he expects to get plus Carl's 230 that he expects to get, and you got your answers. So 212 plus 230 is, boom, pretty easy there, a 442. So finding the expected mean is always really, really simple. However, what about their standard deviation? Well, please, you cannot just add 31 plus 40. It's not that simple. What I have to do is add their variance. So Doug's variance would be 31 squared plus Carl's variance would be 40 squared. Now I have their total variance, and now i got to put a giant square root around all that. So again, let me show you how I'm going to do this on the calculator. I'm going to hit second square root here, so that would be 31 squared plus 40 squared. Close that parenthesis, so I get 50.61. 50.61 for their total standard deviation. 50.61. You get the idea here, right? Okay, now the other cool thing is, don't forget, I could also ask you probability questions here. So if I said, what is the probability that their total score is greater than 475? Okay, so I want to find the total scores greater than 475. Now, this awesome part is that this is the normal model. So I can use normal CDF to help me find probabilities. The only thing, though, is I do need a z-score. So i got to think about, what's the z-score for 475? Well, that would be 475 minus the expected total of 442 divided by the standard deviation for their total of 50.61 because again I'm talking about their total so I got to use the mean and standard deviation for their total so 475 minus, minus 442 is 33 divided by 50.61 is 0.65 so their z-score it would be 0.65 for the 475. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that 475 and 0.65 are equivalent in the sense of 475 is their actual total score, where 0.65 is their z-score. So now to find the probability that they get greater than this, I'm going to go and grab normal CDF. Remember, normal CDF only uses z-score, so that would be 0.65 is the z-score. And I want to look higher than that, because I want to find the probability that they do better than that. And I get a 25.78%. So the probability that they do this would be 25.78%. So in the long run, if Carl and Doug team up many, many, many times, 25.78% of the time, their total would be greater than a 475. All right, one more rule here, or kind of two more, but they kind of go together a little bit. You may also look at the difference between two random variables by simply subtracting the means. So if I want to look at the difference between two random variables, well, all you got to do is subtract the means. That's pretty easy. However, be careful. Even if you're looking at the difference between two random variables, you always increase in standard deviation, which means you still add the variance even though we're looking at a difference. The idea is that any time you put two random variables together, any time you combine two random variables, even if you're looking at the difference between them, you're still building variance. So that's always building variance no matter what. So let's look at this question. Back to Carl and Doug. We already know about their scores, 212 and 31, 230 and 40. Both fall in our model. What is the expected difference? Okay, well, the expected difference, so I'm going to use uh, the expected mu here, and I'm going to use D for difference. Well, let's see. I could actually do it either way. I could do 212 minus 230. That would be looking at Doug minus Carl. 212 minus 230, which would be negative 18. Now, I don't like dealing with negatives, so I would I purposely do it so that it's positive. So I would do 230 minus 212. So 230 minus 212 is also positive 18. It's just me. I'm a positive kind of guy. I like to look at positives. So that would be looking at Carl minus Doug. So make sure you understand this number, though. I expect Carl to do 18 points better than Doug. That's what I expect. I expect Carl to be 
18 pins higher than Doug, right? That's what I expect. Now, what about the standard deviation? Well, once again, when we're talking about standard deviation here, the standard deviation for the difference, even though we're talking about a difference, okay, even though we're talking about a difference, standard deviation always builds up. So it's actually with the same number that I got before. So it's going to be the 31 squared for Doug plus the 40 squared for Carl, square root around that. Even though I'm looking at a difference, Variance always builds up. It always increases no matter what. So keep that in mind. So it would be the square root of 31 squared plus 40 squared, and it would be 50.61. Same as the previous problem. So even though I'm looking at the difference, it's still 50.61 for the standard deviation. Because you're all, you know, the fact that I'm having two people go together, Carl and Doug, I'm still going to build up variance. It's never going to decrease. Okay, so now here is the really, really good question. What is the probability that Doug does better than Carl? Imagine a scenario where um, Doug varies on the high end, right? He, he normally bowls a 212, but let's just say he deviates higher, so he goes higher. And Carl, who normally bowls a 230, deviates lower. So we've got to think about the key value here is zero, right? If the difference is zero... Okay, if there's a zero difference, then that means they tie, right? That means that they're just the same. But that's not what we expect, but that's the value we have to explore. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the z-score for zero. I expect a difference of 18, so I'm going to subtract 18, and the standard deviation is 50.61. The idea here is, you know, if I think about a normal model, right? And this is a normal model for their difference, right? This is what we're saying, is that we expect the difference to be 18. But we could go up 1, 2, 3 standard deviations, down 1, 2, 3 standard deviations. And since the standard deviation for Doug and Carl together is so big, you could easily dip down into the negatives. And the negative doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that, well, Doug does better than Carl. So, 0 minus 18 divided by 50.61 is negative 0.36, negative 0.36, right? So, if I were to fill this in, right, down 50.61, down 50.61, down 50.61, somewhere right around here at negative 0.36 is 0. And again, remember, a difference of 0 simply means that Doug does, well, a difference of 0 would mean that they tie. Anything below 0 would be Doug does better. Anything above zero would mean Carl does better. Because, again, we do expect Carl to do better by 18 pins. All right. So now to answer this question, all I got to do is go to my normal CDF here. And using normal CDF, I'm going to look below. Because, again, remember in my model, a z-score lower than zero would mean that Doug does better. So negative 99 comma negative 0.36. And I get a 35.94% chance. So I'm going to come back over here and write that down. 34.94% chance. That would be down here where Doug actually does better. So the idea here is that I'm looking at the difference between their scores, but I want Doug to do better. And that would be anything less than zero. So that's why zero is really the key number here, because... A difference of zero is when they tie. So I know I expect 18 to be in the center, but zero is going to be somewhere down there to the left. And anything below zero would be where Doug does better. Anything above zero would be the expected Carl does better. So all I had to do is find the z-score for zero, which is negative 0.36, and then I use my normal CDF to look less than that. That's where the area where Doug would do better. So I do get a 35.94% chance that Doug would end up doing better than Carl. So hopefully that problem makes sense to you guys, and hopefully you understand the key ideas in this video. The ideas are if you're just converting to dollars or from inches to kilograms or whatever. If you're just converting, you're allowed to multiply all you want. But when you are combining random variables, you have to think about adding them together. Um, but be careful with standard deviation. You cannot add standard deviation. You have to add what we call the variance first. So you do have to square the standard deviation to get to that variance. And then this is the key problem to understand that even when you're looking at the difference between two things, variance always builds up. So keep that in mind as well. All right, hopefully the video made sense to you. We're going to do a lot of practice with it. The problems in your packet should be very similar to these problems as well for you to help you. All right, thanks a lot, guys.